Welcome to HLC 210, Revolutionizing Colorectal Cancer with Detection Innovation at Medtronic. My name is Todd Carter, and I'm a Solution Architecture Leader with AWS. And today I'm joined by Lawrence Castlebrenner and Giovanni Dinopoli. Giovanni is president of the Gastrointestinal Operating Unit within the Medical Surgical Portfolio at Medtronic. Giovanni has been with Medtronic for 10 years, and during that time, he has built strong relationships with endoscopists throughout the world to identify unmet clinical needs and gather input on new products, which serve to accelerate innovation and business growth. Giovanni recently received the prestigious Crystal Award from the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. In recognition of his and his team's contributions and commitment to new technology that improve patient care and reach, Lawrence leads R&D for the Gastrointestinal Operating Unit and is the site lead for the GI facility in Israel. During her six years at Medtronic, Lawrence and her team have executed multiple innovative programs, one of which we'll be sharing with you today. Lawrence is passionate about applying new technologies and collaborating with strategic partners to create breakthrough advancements in patient care for GI. She's an avid promoter of artificial intelligence within Medtronic and an activist in initiatives promoting culture, diversity, and inclusion. Today, we'll start out with a quick overview of AWS Help for Health. I'll hand off to Giovanni, who will introduce you to Medtronic and how they're working to disrupt the way colon cancer screening is done. I'll jump back in and talk a little bit about AWS and how it's powering Medtronic. And finally, Lawrence will cover more about the product Medtronic is building. So with that, let's get started. First, a little bit about AWS Health. Healthcare organizations are moving towards digital transformation to decrease the cost of operation and patient care, improve patient and member experience, and make data-driven decisions. To help customers accelerate their transformation, this past summer, we announced AWS for Health, an offering of AWS services and AWS partner network solutions to help organizations increase their pace of innovation, unlock the potential of health data, and reach their business initiatives faster. AWS Health aligns purpose-built services and solutions across critical areas of healthcare and life sciences, so customers can more easily identify the right cloud technology to accelerate their digital transformation and reach their business initi initiatives faster. At this point, I'm going to hand off to Giovanni to tell us a little bit more about how Medtronic is disrupting the color cancer screening. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Giovanni Di Napoli, and I am the president of the Gastrointestinal Operating Unit at Medtronic. Uh, I'm humbled, excited to be here and uh, share with you a few of the uh, highlights of our collaboration with AWS. Uh, I'm truly excited about this uh, uh, work that has been done so far, and you will see why in a second. Uh, so first off, I just want to highlight our business unit. Uh, Medtronic is structured in different uh, operating unit. Our operating unit is called gastrointestinal. And our vision is to detect early and treat early gastrointestinal diseases and cancer. And uh, we want to bring to market uh, disruptive innovation that can help our customers and our patients uh, to early diagnosis and early treatment. And you will see in a second why I'm talking about this. So uh, a little bit more of background uh, and history of Medtronic, about Medtronic. Uh, here in this picture, you can see our founder, Herb Bakken, that in 1949 uh, founded Medtronic by inventing this first uh, wireless uh, pacemaker on the right side of the slide on his left hand. This was the first pacemaker ever invented uh, uh, without, uh, without cord, without cables. And uh, you can see on his uh, right hand on the left side, uh, the new micro pacemaker. So the huge advancement in terms of uh, uh, you know, size of the technology, uh, but still with the effectiveness of helping patients worldwide uh, to prevent more severe conditions. So our company is based on innovation. Our, our company was founded on innovation, uh, and we all believe that we are part of this journey as engineers, uh, and that's the reason why we want to engineer the extraordinary here in this company through innovation every single day. 
Um, so uh, the the business uh, I work with and I lead, uh, uh, as I said, the focus on GI diseases and cancer, they're very common. Uh, one in four uh, U.S. adults experience symptoms of uh, GI conditions. Uh, so I'm sure some of you experience, like me, reflux conditions uh, uh, once in a lifetime or maybe more. So our technologies aim to detect early this condition and support decision-making for our customers to treat these conditions, either with the drugs or also with the potential treatments. Um, you know, GI cancer and condition are very common, as I said, very deadly. They're progressive, so in some cases, uh, uh, what today looks like, you know, a normal, uh, uh, I would say, um, uh, symptoms can become uh, a more dangerous condition uh, in the long term. So that's the reason why early prevention is very important. And also they're very impactful. Uh, more than 20 million uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, adults uh, are ho hospitalized every year in, um, uh, for, for any uh, of these conditions that I was just mentioning. So um, our... Our approach uh, to this uh, measure, uh, um, I would say, uh, conditions, uh, GI conditions, is through innovation, as I said. And uh, really want to bring uh, uh, to market to our customers uh, technologies that are different uh, because they can help uh, and they can uh, advance also diagnosis compared to what is available today as a standard of care uh, with our customers. We also aim to become uh, more and more global because we want to reach millions of more patients uh, globally with our technologies. And also one of the ultimate goal is to empower our patients uh, to take decisions uh, about their whole health. And that's the reason why also we decided to collaborate with AWS in some of these solutions, because we believe more and more the future of MedTech is about consumers, is about patients. And that's where this partnership between medical device and also consumer approach can be really important moving forward. So... Um, uh, I said a few times about our vision, detect early and treat early. Let me talk about something more specific here. Uh, let's talk about colon cancer, which is one of the areas where we spend most of our time in our business uh, because uh, this is the second deadliest cancer worldwide. Uh, 140 million patients uh, actually are eligible every year for a colon screening. The procedure is called colonoscopy. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with this uh, procedure. And... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the good news about colon cancer is that it's totally preventable. If uh, the lesion, uh, which is called polyp, uh, precancer condition, is identified early and caught early, can be removed and, uh, uh, and cancer can be beaten. That's the reason why prevention in this case is critical uh, to be able to succeed. And 91% who, you know, are doing screening and they find an early uh, lesion can beat cancer. So that's a very important stat that we have to keep in mind. That's the reason why screening is critical in this type of cancer. Now, the challenge with the current screening is that colonoscopy is not uh, the most pleasant procedure that patients want to go through uh, to go uh, and understand their colon situation. Uh, there are different reasons, but we have uh, 22 million patients in the US that are eligible for screening for colon cancer, but they don't want to go through the screening. They're called non-compliant. So that's an area where we as a company are trying to understand uh, and we are developing devices uh, to really bring these patients into this loop because uh, we know early detection, as I said, is very important. The main reason why uh, these patients uh, don't want to go for a colonoscopy is because uh, uh, you know, it's unpleasant, uh, in some cases also embarrassing, and also because uh, you don't you know, show any symptoms of colon cancer until it's too late. So uh, the behaviors of the patients is like, you know, I don't feel anything, I don't need to get a colonoscopy. How can we change this, right? So, and we want to change this through technology. We want to change this uh, through a more appealing, uh, a more patient-friendly procedure that can be performed at home. And here comes the collaboration and the partnership with, with AWS. Please take a look at this, um, um, at this video uh, and you, know, you will take a full picture understanding about what we are trying to build uh, uh, in a collaboration with AWS. Please. Alexa, what's on my to-do list? You have one item on your to-do list. Schedule a colonoscopy.
Good morning. Reminder, today is your Pill Chem Genius colon exam. Hey guys, my procedure is complete and no polyps found. Alexa, order a Peel Cam Genius colon kit for my husband. Done. Pending a physician consultation. Are you interested in learning about other at-home diagnostic tests? I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoy the video. I, I hope also you are excited as I am because uh, we believe uh, this solution uh, being so patient friendly, so innovative, uh, will allow millions of patients out there that are not going through screening uh, to actually be uh, incentivized by technology uh, to receive this screening method. Here you can see in this slide a summary of what we just saw from the video. So you can order the test uh, through a simple uh, call to Alexa, uh, through Amazon.com, you receive the capsule at home. You can perform the procedure at home uh, through a video uh, video call uh, with your uh, PCP, and uh, and at, at the same time also the data will be uploaded on the cloud through AWS. And our gastroenterologists will be able to read the study through artificial intelligence. So narrow down the number of images that he has to um, um, detect and also diagnose. And in case of positive finding, uh, the patients uh, will receive. Uh, also a notification on his phone, her phone, in, in order to be able to remove this lesion the same day of this test. In case of negative finding, still, the patient will receive a, a notification that the test is negative. So, very seamlessly, uh, I think it's very sexy as technology, uh, and, uh, you know, this, we believe, uh, uh, can bring, again, more patients into the funnel of screening because we know how important it is. So, so in summary, uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that uh, uh, this collaboration with AWS uh, allow us to think out of the box, uh, allow us uh, to be challenged in area where we are not expert, we cannot pretend to be expert, and uh, also allow us uh, to move faster than what we will do without uh, this uh, collaboration. And I just believe uh, this is what the future is going to look like, uh, where you have to match experience from different industry with the ultimate goal uh, to bring to market uh, something that is going to be even more meaningful uh, for our patients. So you can appreciate here uh, the number of, uh, um, I would say, upside uh, that we have found in uh, uh, collaborating with AWS and also Amazon in general. And uh, you also saw from the video where we are going to be able to uh, utilize their power, their experience. And also we as a medtech company, we need to realize that in some cases, uh, that's the way to go and meet expectations for our patients. So I hope I was able to uh, provide you some of the background of our thought process. Uh, please reach out anytime if you want to get more information. Thank you very much for listening. Isn't it amazing how medical procedures are changing? As Giovanni mentioned, since the beginning, we've partnered closely with Medtronic to bring this innovative product to life. As we worked with Medtronic to develop the right architecture, there were four core principles that heavily influenced how AWS could best support PillCam Genius and ultimately influenced the architecture and services that were selected. First, the technology had to be able to scale globally and had to be highly reliable. It had to be secure and able to meet regulatory requirements. It needed to leverage managed services to allow the Medtronic teams to focus on delivering the very best product and offload many of the operational tasks to AWS. And it needed to improve the way healthcare was delivered. 
In a few minutes, Lawrence is going to walk you through how Medtronic has leveraged AWS to deliver PillCam Genius and the journey to today. But before we get to that, I would like to highlight four key requirements and the services that Medtronic decided to leverage to meet those requirements. First, Medtronic desired to build a modular application that could run not only in the cloud, but also on premises. They needed to have a flexible and reliable messaging platform. They needed a cost-effective, high-performance database. And they needed a platform to power machine learning and deep learning. To support the need for a modular application, Medtronic selected a containerization strategy built upon Amazon EKS. EKS offers a highly available and highly scalable managed control plane that makes it easy to get started with Kubernetes. EKS is native Kubernetes. It is not a fork and it's upstream conformant. This makes it easy to migrate any standard Kubernetes application without needing to refactor code. We run and support four versions of Kubernetes, which gives our customers sufficient time to roll out upgrades. As part of this, we even backport patches, fixes, and upgrades to Kubernetes versions. In addition, EKS provides a managed Kubernetes experience to provide the security, stability, and operational excellence that we've developed over the last few years running millions of clusters in production. We also offer EKS Anywhere, which allows customers to run Kubernetes outside of AWS, including in their own data centers and on their own infrastructure. EKS Anywhere provides an installable software package to create and operate Kubernetes clusters on premises. Automation tooling for cluster lifecycle support and is fully supported by AWS. All Kubernetes clusters, including EKS Anywhere clusters, can be viewed in the EKS console. Medtronic is also leveraging Amazon MQ, a managed message broker service with support for Apache Active MQ. It is not a fork, and it makes it very easy to set up and operate message brokers in the cloud. It provides broad API compatibility with protocols such as JMS, AMQP, MQTT, Stomp, and WebSockets, to name a few. Amazon MQ makes it extremely simple to create a message broker. You can use the AWS Management Council, AWS CloudFormation, the CLI, or API calls to launch production-ready message brokers within minutes. It provides vertical scalability through seven different instance types, which provide varying combinations of CPU, memory, and network performance, and horizontal, excuse me, horizontal scalability through a network of brokers across multiple availability zones. Amazon MQ provides high availability brokers with messages stored redundantly across multiple availability zones and active standby brokers that automatically fail over to a standby instance if a broker or availability zone fails. All messages are secure and encrypted, both at rest and in flight, and endpoints can be created inside of VPC or externally for connections to third parties. Lastly, Amazon MQ is integrated with CloudWatch, so you can monitor the health of your message brokers and your applications and set alarms to notify you when something goes wrong. To meet its database needs, Medtronic selected Amazon Aurora, a MySQL and Postgres compatible relational database built for the cloud. It combines performance and availability of traditional enterprise databases with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases. Amazon Aurora is up to five times faster than the standard MySQL databases and three times faster than standard Postgres databases. It provides the security, availability, and reliability of commercial databases at about one-tenth the cost. Amazon Aurora is fully managed by the Amazon Relational Database Service, which automates time-consuming administration tasks like hardware provisioning, database setup, patching, and backups. One thing that makes Aurora unique from Postgres and MySQL is that we've decoupled the storage from the query processing. Separating the transaction layer allows us to increase the availability, improve durability, and achieve a higher throughput. It also allows us to achieve a database that is self-healing and able to scale beyond the database engine. This model allows us to push the work typically done by the database engine, such as managing cache, 
pages, logs, and other activities to the storage layer. Amazon Aurora is designed to offer 99.99% .99 availability, replicating six copies of the data across three availability zones and backing up the data continuously to Amazon S3. It transparently recovers from physical storage failures and instance failover typically takes less than 30 seconds. You can also backtrack within seconds to previous points in time to recover from user errors. With Global Database, a single Aurora database can span multiple AWS regions to enable fast local reads and quick disaster recovery. To meet our customers where they are on their artificial intelligence and machine learning journey and help them achieve specific business outcomes, we provided the broadest and most complete set of machine learning and artificial intelligence services for builders of all levels of expertise. We continue to improve services at a rapid pace. AWS has launched more than 250 new capabilities for machine learning and artificial intelligence in just the last 12 months. For expert machine learning practitioners like Medtronic, we provide optimized versions of the most popular deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow. AWS provides the broadest and deepest portfolio of compute, network, and storage infrastructure services with the choice of processors and accelerators to meet unique performance and budget needs for machine learning. We offer the highest performance instances for machine learning training in the cloud with Amazon EC2 P4D instances powered by the latest NVIDIA A100 Tensor Core GPUs and coupled with the first in the cloud, 400 gigabits per second instance networking. P4D instances are deployed in hyperscale clusters called EC2 Ultra Clusters, offering supercomputer class performance for the most complex machine learning training jobs. For inference, which typically represents about 90% of the cost of machine learning, we provide the lowest cloud cost with Amazon EC2 Inf1 instances powered by the AWS Inferentia chips. Now that we've looked at a few of the core AWS services Medtronic is using, let's dive a little deeper into the technical journey of Pilcam Genius with Lawrence. Hello, I'm Lawrence Kesselbrenner. I'm the VP of R&D for the gastrointestinal business at Medtronic. And uh, I'm going to explain how everything that Giovanni was uh, showing actually was, uh, was developed and, uh, and using some of, uh, of the AWS services and also explain how we went through the journey together with, uh, with the team at AWS. So, so starting from um, an industry challenge that we have when we are talking about healthcare, it's slow adoption of new technologies, mainly due to security, privacy, regulation. So when we started the journey into taking our existing product into the cloud, we did a voice of customers and we found out that about 50% of our existing customers in the US and almost the same in, in Europe actually were not willing to move so quickly to the cloud. So even, even though we had some features that we could add and, and eventually a lot of good things that we can bring to our products using cloud technology, we know that it's going to be a big challenge for our adoption of our technology. And if we want to continue to upgrade our install base, we've decided that we really need to continue to support also solution that is not going to be only cloud-based solutions. And, um, and when we started our journey, actually we have established three guiding principles. So the first one was in order for us to continue to serve on install base, we need to have an on-prem solution. So not only a cloud-based solution, but also an on-premise solution. But we didn't want to do everything from scratch. So we wanted to use the services that could help us to go fast to the cloud and to use everything that we need for security, for scalability, but making sure that we can easily go to an on-premise solution. The second guiding principle, obviously, was as any customers who want to go to the cloud to do uh, the higher standards of privacy and security. And uh, we are lucky at Medtronic to have what we call the Medtronic Global Security Office, who was an integral part of the solution. And then the last principle that we had, that what we had developed a lot of legacy code over the years, and we want to be able to continue to reuse the code. So we had these three guiding principles and we started the collaboration with the AWS um, team. 
And we had a first workshop together just with a preliminary software platform architecture and some discussions around the DevOps pipeline. And like you can see on this slide, we had many discussions. We went from a, a broad high level architecture discussions to very deep discussion into each and each service. What does the service bring to us? Again, going back to our guiding principles, is it the service that we want to use or not? And um, it was amazing to see the collaboration that we had with the team and learning as we go with this journey. Moving to a cloud for a medical device company is really a transformation. And, uh, and we had fantastic discussions and, and great support, use case analysis, and we really built a very strong architecture that I'm going to show you some of, of, uh, of the different aspects of, of the questions we had uh, and decisions that we, we took across this, uh, this journey. So going back to uh, what we presented before, uh, the Pilcam Genius experience is taking the Pilcam, the capsules that you swallow, takes pictures, sends the pictures to the cloud using the patient phone. On the cloud, we do our machine learning and our AI and a lot of things that we have to do on the, on the cloud in order for our physicians to be able to get the images, to enter the report, to do the diagnosis. We are doing a lot of algorithms also in machine learning. At the end, the physician would connect using a, a browser and would uh, analyze the images, write the report, and the report will be sent back to the cloud. So quite uh, a simple solution. But if you remember what I said before about the on-premise solution, so if we are talking about a non-cloud solution, it would be same kind of, of, of experience for the patient. It would still swallow the capsule. It would still have the same equipment. But at the end of the procedure, instead of sending the procedure directly to the cloud during the procedure, it would send back the equipment to the physician and they would upload it to their workstation using an on-prem solution and they would be able to read uh, the, the, the analysis of the study on, on their solution inside the hospital. Could be a desktop solution, could be uh, a browser solution, but it would be on-premise uh, in order for them to continue to support our product. So, um, so that's, that's uh, the solutions that we have developed. Going a little bit now into uh, some of the aspects of the solution, uh, the first big thing that we had to establish was really the DevOps uh, architecture, the DevOps methodology, and also what we wanted to, to have as a solution for our development, our production environment, our continuous deployment also. Uh, and the first thing that is really important to, to, to understand from, um, especially from a medical device company, is that we have to make sure that we test the solution and the system on what we call production equivalent solution. So when we talk about a medical device, if I take an example of the capsule itself, it's quite easy. You do the same thing like you would do in manufacturing. You make your capsule and you test it and you call it a production equivalent as close as you can from, from production. Now, when we talk about cloud solution, we want to do the same. So we want to make sure that we will have exactly the same system with everything on it, the operating system, all the service packs, security patches, everything the same like we'd use in development, for testing and in production. So we call it a production equivalent. And so we use the cloud formation to make sure that everything will be automatically deployed and will be controlled in the way that we can really know on which system we did the, the production, on which system we did the, the verification, and on which system we did the development. So a very important part from, from a medical device company to make sure that we have full control of our environment. Then another example of, of uh, what we decided to do regarding using the same solution for on-prem, a good example is AKS that uh, Todd explained before. So that was also a decision we took because we want to be able to use Kubernetes as an on-prem solution, but we want to be able to use all the goodies of, uh, of a managed service. So not to have to do everything ourselves when we use a cloud solution, but be able also to do that on on-prem. So, so we decided to go with Kubernetes and we decided to use the AKS service as a solution for us in our architecture of, uh, of the DevOps. Um, and then going back to what we are reusing from Medtronic. So when we talk about a, a, a big company that is moving into cloud, we have multiple cloud solutions at Medtronic. Um, and we are lucky to have a cloud center of excellence with a landing zone that they are managing. So we are now using the landing zones that Medtronic is, is providing 
using AWS services, and that allows us, we call it animatronic, play big, play small. So we can decide which services we want to use. We can decide exactly what configuration we are going to use from this landing zone and from the bigger uh, service that Metronic is providing us, but we can reuse a lot of the resources in order for us to be able to not spend resources on managing the landing zone. So, so a good a good split of what we want to use, be able to decide on which service we we are going to use from Amazon, from AWS, and which services we are going to use from uh, from um, uh, from the other solutions. Now, going into the cloud infrastructure itself. Um, so here also, guiding principle, don't reinvent the wheel, just what we can reuse, what we can use as a managed service, we, we did use it. So for example, if I take the database, we used Amazon Aurora, high availability, very easy to maintain, high scalability. So for us, it's perfect. Again, we can use it also on on-prem solution. Um, but then in some cases, we said, okay, it's okay to have specific uh, services or specific features that we are going to provide to the customers who are going to use the cloud solution because we also want to differentiate between our customers and we also want to utilize the capabilities that we get with uh, with a cloud solution. So, for example, for notifications, we decided to go with uh, with the Amazon services and uh, and if we are not using the cloud, then we will not use the notification. So, in, in, in the features uh, identification, we said some of the features are really the basic core of our products. We will use it also on cloud, but we will use also some features that will be cloud only. And in that case, we can go with, um, you know, just the, the regular services that, that uh, AWS is providing us. So you can see here a lot of, of different services that we are using for the data management, for logging and monitoring, for network. We have a, a, a microservice architecture and, and again, using that combination of, uh, of services from AWS. Super easy to use. We can reduce maintenance and, and have availability. Another comment I think is important for, for people who are asking themselves, how can we do this transformation is that we had also the support during the time that we developed. So we, we were continuously working with the AWS team in order for us to learn more as we go. New services are added. So now we can look into maybe a discussion or decisions that we took at the beginning of the project. Maybe we can change it. So, so learning organization and supporting also our teams and making sure that we have the right product uh, for our customers. And, uh, and as I said at the beginning, another very, very important guiding principle was, of course, to have the highest level of, of security. And here I, I, I'm happy to say that we have, again, very, very strong support, good uh, decisions taken from the beginning of the project, strong collaboration between the team. Uh, we are using all the security approach that are completely in line with the Metronic global security policy. And we say security is almost job zero. So, so we can really reuse a lot of, of that in our, in our solution. So, so we really have this entire solution, the DevOps, the infrastructure, the security, and everything is, is based on what we can do for the cloud solution and also for the on-premise. And we know that we are going to be able to have really lower overhead of, of our solutions. So now I, I want to show you a, a short video of the real problem that we are trying to, to, to solve with, uh, with all these solutions is, is really going to the machine learning and identifying the polyps that are going to be um, removed by colonoscopy before they become cancer. And, and it has a lot of, of challenges in itself, difficult to identify. I'm going to show you a short video. Um, but maybe for the sake of the discussion, we were able also to use a lot of the legacy calls that we, the legacy calls that we had uh, using TensorFlow on top of our architecture and, and reusing a lot of, of the code, but also developing new code for this uh, machine learning and for this AI. So let me show you the video explaining how we, we do that and, and to also show you a little bit how it looks to find polyps. The typical procedure of Pilcam Genius Colon contains many tens of thousands of images. Pilcam Genius Colon aims to find colonic polyps, which are focal findings. The task of the physician to find these polyps among the abundant images can be challenging. Finding polyps can be like finding a needle in a haystack. Reviewing all images as a video is a hard task, 
which requires extreme focus for a long period of time. Take a look. Did you miss the polyp? Let's scroll that back slowly. There it is. PillCam Genius Colon allows the physician to find colonic polyps more easily. Okay, I hope that now you understand that the real challenge is not only going to the cloud, but, uh, but really identify these polyps that are so, so important for us. Um, so to, to finalize the, the discussion, we started with locally installed software. We moved to software as a service. We started with some difficulty to scale up with the distributed hardware, and now we can really have an infinity uh, scale up with the cloud deployment. And of, of course, we have also a lot of software deploy deployment that we had in the past that were complex and complicated with workstation and desktops and servers. And now we, we have a much faster and more secure deployments. So thank you for your attention, and um, I'll be happy to answer any question. A big thanks to Gio and Lawrence for joining us today on this session. Please check out our other healthcare and life science sessions, and thank you for joining us.